and Adidas Golf. Now, I've included Nike and Adidas in previous brand lists, but I want to talk specifically about the golf wear. The golf pants, the golf shoes, um, even some of the tops do really well, and I actually find it quite a bit at the thrift store, and I've never gotten these in liquidation, I'm actually thinking. I get, of course, I, I got about a 300-piece Nike liquidation lot and it's been selling pretty well. Most of it was women's. Um, some of it was plus size. It's not selling for as much as I would have hoped. I don't usually sell a bunch of like new with tags Nike. Like uh, some of the sports bras are only going for like 20 to 30 bucks and they retail for like 60 to 70. So Nike women's wear definitely look up comps, but I wanted to focus on Nike golf and Adidas golf because it does really well for me. I find it a lot at the thrift store and um, a lot of it has a high sell-through rate. And I will talk more about sell-through rate as we go through this video. You're going to hear me repeatedly talk about sell-through rate. I run my business on a high sell-through rate model. So we'll talk about that shortly. Let's keep moving because we got a lot to go. By the way, my name is Nikki. Hi, subscribe. We are in my storage unit where I store about a thousand of my listings. I was gonna say all of them. I have some stuff um, other places, Tiva. Tiva is actually a brand that I sell quite a bit. Let me get it. I'll show you actually. I'm actually here to do my shipping. So um, this is the brand label. So I don't have to put it on the screen. Every other brand that I don't have here specifically, I'll put on the screen. And they make shoes that look like this. Um, different styles, different types of sandals, shoes, really popular brand, high retail value, high resale value. Um, these I got retail arbitrage and I paid 10 bucks. I have to look at my SKU. Pretty sure I paid 10 bucks a pair for these and these sold on eBay and I sell them on Poshmark anywhere from like 40 to $60 um, depending on the size and style. They make men's, women's, so love selling that brand. I do have a list if you are new here. I've done this type of video three times. You guys seem to like it, so I'm going to try to do it monthly, but I have a list so we can keep it moving. I try to go pretty fast. Under Armour, love selling Under Armour men's. Find it every single time I go thrifting, every single time. Um, not all of them are equal, so I look up comps. You're going to hear me say that a lot because like a pair of like black Under Armour pants won't necessarily sell as well as a pair of black Under Armour plus size men's pants. Like I just sold a 4X men's like Under Armour tracksuit pant. Um, they weren't even in the best condition. I got them from the bins. I paid less than two bucks for them and it sold for 25 bucks. So you will see I include all types of things in these videos. If you are a liquidation seller, I'm gonna mention some brands for you. If you're a thrift only seller, if you're a flea market seller, we include all of it. As I always say, I am an inclusive reseller here. <laughs> Stuart Weitzman, a brand I personally, I'm getting a ton of messages. Um, a brand I personally love wearing and reselling. The newer styles do better. Stuart Weitzman has been around a very long time. You're gonna find a ton of Stuart Weitzman on the Real Real, on Thread Up. The older styles, not so great. Also, that's a brand that you can sell on both platforms if you are new. Hello, I sell on multiple different platforms. I believe in diversifying your income as much as possible. I currently sell on ThreadUp, eBay, Poshmark, The Real Real, Amazon. I feel like I'm leaving one out. If I remember, I'll get back to you. Newer styles love selling. Tommy Hilfiger, listen, I am not above selling a bread and butter brand. Tommy Hilfiger actually retails for quite a bit. I do really well selling the dresses and men's um, uh, tops specifically. I've had some men's Tommy Hilfiger pants that have been sitting for so long that I picked up from the bins. Like I'm talking like four years, maybe three or four years. But I do really well selling the sweaters with the higher quality fabric, like merino wool or the silk or the women's dresses, especially if they have um, nice colors. Like, uh, like I sold a Tommy Hilfiger pink dress recently for 30 bucks that I got on Dollar Day. Well, rest in peace. We don't have Dollar Day here in LA anymore. It went up last year. It is now $1.99 day, so $2 day basically. Calvin Klein is another brand similar to Tommy Hilfiger that I like selling specifically like the women's dresses and coats and then like men's. I actually, I've sold Calvin Klein, a Calvin Klein suit once or twice. 
um, in the last couple of years, but they tend to sit. I wish I could sell suits more often, but they just sit for so long for me uh, because I find a ton of them here where I live for decent pricing, but then they just sit and sit and sit. So I don't know if I'm going to butcher this brand's name. Monroe? M-U-N-R-O. I will be putting... I should move over. I'll be putting the brand tag somewhere so you guys can find it. I actually have these shoes back here. I store my shoes way back there, but I can't, I don't feel like going back there. I'll put the brand name up here. They make um, shoes. They sell at Nordstrom. They sell at a couple other retailers. They actually retail for quite a bit and they hold their resale value. I've sold them used and I've sold them new. So there you go. And that's a newer to me brand that I learned about in the last couple of years. All right, friends, change of scenery. Let's continue. Errands needed to be ran. Next up, we have Easy Spirit. I got a ton of Easy Spirit in the shoe palette that I unboxed on this channel. I'm going to mention, I'm sorry, I have to put the windows down. Hopefully it's not too loud. I'm going to mention um, a couple brands that I got in some palettes that I have purchased. If I can remember, I will link those videos down below. Uh, I always say this, you guys, I don't need to like the stuff that I'm selling. I just need it to make me money. I'm personally not a biggest, the biggest fan of their shoes and the styles, but they sell really well. Uh, their shoes can go upwards of a hundred dollars depending on the style, but I feel like they range anywhere from 50 to a hundred brand new and they hold their resale value pretty well. If you can find them in good condition, I've sold them both used from the thrift store and new from my palette Puma. I don't have the best luck with selling Puma's shoes for adults, but I tend to do really well selling them for kids. So I don't know, take that for what you will. If you remember nothing else that I say, please check the sell through rate. There's always at least one comment that says, how do you check the sell through rate? I keep saying I'll do a video on it, but just in YouTube, Google how to check eBay sell through rate. Basically what I do is let's say I have a pair of Puma shoes size three. I'll put in the search bar Puma's kids shoes size three. I look at how many active listings there are just for ease of math. Let's just say there's a hundred in a 90 day period. Then I scroll to the side and I click sold to see how many have sold. And let's say 50 have sold in the last 90 days. So there's a hundred listed and 50 have sold. That's a 50% sell through rate. That's pretty dang good. Uh, well, that's not bad, I should say. It depends on your business model. Do what works best for you. Some of my friends will buy things that have like a 10% sell-through rate and they'll just hold on to it for years until it sells. I personally try to focus on high sell-through rate. So I would love, in an optimum world, I would love to see 100 of those sold and 100 listed, meaning within 90 days, 100% of those listings are selling through. That means that hopefully you would suspect that within 90 days, yours would sell within 90 days. So I try to shoot for as close to 100% sell through rate as I can. That's why I said 50% is not bad. It's not great for me because I like to move, move, move. I have limited space. You'll probably see my storage unit at some point in this video. So I try to move things quickly. Moving on, ice cream. This is a new to me brand that I actually found at the thrift store. I think it may only be sold at Nordstrom. I know that it piqued my interest because it is black owned. And I think it's pretty cool that it, like if you actually go to Nordstrom's website, they will label businesses that are black owned slash black funded, which I thought was pretty cool considering. I just think it's cool. So anyways, I found this t-shirt that they make at the thrift store. It was uh, $7. And it sold within 90 days and it sold for $45, which is pretty good because if you look at Nordstrom's website, their stuff, like their shirts specifically, sell anywhere from like 50, I saw one for 100, but it's a new to me brand that I wanted to mention that sold pretty quickly. So, and it's black owned, which is pretty cool. Champion. I like to sell men's champion. I get women's champion in palettes a lot. And if you look up the sell through rate, it doesn't sell super fast unless you have like a newer style or something. But the men's activewear, I even pick it up at the bins, you guys. Uh, the pants, um, even the shirts. I don't have the best luck with shoes. I do sell Champions Kids shoes. But I like selling men's champions and champions kids. 
um, you're gonna see a running theme. There are certain brands that I'll put on a list and I'll be like, I don't pick it up, I don't like selling it. Let me think of one, uh, like Theory. Like for women, it doesn't sell that great for me. I'll pick it up, but I know it's gonna be a long tail sell. Like it may sit for a couple years. But Theory Men's, I love picking up because it sells pretty quickly depending on the style. So there are certain brands that you're gonna hear me say, oh, you know, I like this in men's or I like this in kids. And that's just how it is with certain things. You know, these brands make women's kids, dogs, and certain things sell better than others, okay? Converse, um, this is another brand. I wanted to include brands, you guys, that everybody could find. Whether you're a liquidation seller, whether you're a thrift store seller, whether you're a yard sale seller, wherever you get your inventory, I wanted you to feel included in this video. We believe in inclusivity here on this channel. So, Converse is a brand I feel like you could flip retail arbitrage, you could find at the thrift store, you can find it at yard sales, check comps. There are so many different styles, you guys, and not all of them sell great. Check comps, but I specifically like selling, you know, their classic Converse shoe. Um, and the, some of the styles sell faster than others, but I usually do pretty well. And I usually find it quite a bit at the thrift store. Vans. I don't, I'm not super experienced with selling Vans, but here in Los Angeles, I actually find it quite a bit at the thrift store. Some of them, like I said, a running theme here, some of them sit for longer than others. You have to look up styles, use Google Lens. I think I actually did a video on how to use Google Lens to find stock photos. Don't come for me, I know some of you don't like stock photos. Blah, 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 I get it. Whatever you do with your business, that's cool. But you could use Google Lens just to research comps. So uh, they're not all the same, not all the styles, but Vans is a line. Actually, I don't get Vans and liquidation. I have only sold it from thrift, thrifting and the flea market. Let me know if you guys would be interested in a flea market video. Because I've been like loving going to the flea market. All right, Naturalizer. Again, another brand similar to Easy Spirit. Very comfy shoes. I don't personally like the style, but it doesn't matter. I will sell you anything. Remember the Birkenstocks we talked about in the last brand's video? I think they're hideous. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Nobody cares about Nikki's opinion. I just want to sell you what you're looking for. People like Naturalizer. It retails. I would say it's like a mid-range shoe brand. I have to turn the air on, you guys. It's... 80 degrees here in Los Angeles today and I just have to turn the air on. I hope that's not too loud. I'll turn it off in a second. Um, and it holds its uh, it holds its value on the resale market. Oh, that's too loud. So, love it. Michael Kors. You can find this brand everywhere. I feel like once Michael Kors went to TJ Maxx and Marshalls, it kind of took a nosedive. But I personally, at the thrift store, have found the Michael Kors, what's the higher end brand? I'll put the tag on the screen. Is it Michael Kors Collection? The one that's like more runway, the higher end. I find it at the thrift store quite a bit because I think a lot of people don't know that Michael Kors has that higher tier line and they pass on it. I don't know, I find it a lot and I flip it uh, for like anywhere from like a 30, to a hundred dollar profit. I found a Michael Kors coat at the thrift store for 20 bucks and I flipped it for 120 on eBay like two months ago. So I'll put the tag on the screen. It's escaping me that, is it collection? I don't know, I'll put it on the screen for you. Arcteryx, am I saying that brand right? I love selling this brand, very expensive very expensive expensive brand it's sold at a couple different retailers i've only found it at the thrift store twice but i found it at consignment stores quite a bit i love uh sourcing at consignment stores one of my favorites is crossroads i don't think it's nationwide we have quite a few of them here in the la area i've been to them in texas i know you guys have them in dallas where else it's maybe nationwide, I don't know, but personally, really good consignment store to find some of these more obscure brands that you may not find at the thrift store. And another key tip, I should do a short video on this. I've been loving short form content. If you are not following along, I post YouTube short videos almost daily, you guys. So make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe because I'm putting out all the info almost daily, but a lot of these consignment stores, you guys, have websites. So, because uh, one of the 
like most common complaints I hear from resellers is like, I don't live in LA, Nikki. Like I don't find the stuff you find. You guys, Crossroads, Buffalo Exchange, look them up. Some of the different um, cities have their own websites and they'll ship the stuff to you. A lot of times you have to pay for shipping, but I mean, if you're able to just sit on your couch and source, wouldn't that be great? You could just look up comps. So little key tip for me to you friends. Um, I told some of my reselling friends I was gonna tell you guys that and they didn't like that, but I am all of the abundance. I believe in the abundance mindset. I don't, I'm not that scarcity mindset that we all can't make it. I am happy to share a lot of information with you guys because I believe we all can make it. There's an abundance of wealth, abundance of knowledge, there's an abundance of money for us all to make a ton of sales. So, well, I'm not gonna tell you where I source my stuff. I'm gonna try to help you as much as I can, okay? Crocs, people love their Crocs. I haven't worn Crocs since I used to work in the hospital, uh, in healthcare back when I worked in the hospital. Crocs were like the it thing to wear. Uh, I don't know if they still do. That was so long ago. But people love their Crocs. My goddaughter literally wears her Crocs every day. She wears them to school. She told She's tensed. She told me her friends make fun of her because she puts the little pins in them. But she doesn't care. People love their Crocs, you guys. I don't pay up for them. I will find them at the bins. The great thing is they're easy to clean. I'm paying less than two bucks for them. And they're usually like a quick $20 flip for me. So... Take it for what you will. Now, in these past brand videos, I have not included, what time is it? I'm on a time crunch always, because I have 50 million jobs. I have an open house in an hour, so I need to go change out of my workout clothes, go do the open house, and then we'll probably finish this in my storage unit. I don't know. Different changes of sceneries. I have not included high-end brands in my brand videos, but I wanted to include it because one, like I said, you guys can source this stuff online. The lighting's not that great, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, you may not find Louis Vuitton in your thrift store, but I, you know where you can find it? You could source on the Real Real. you could source on ThreadUp, you could source at these consignment stores. So I wanted to include it because I actually have quite a bit of experience now selling these higher-end brands. Louis Vuitton, I have sold exclusively on the real real and also thread up and eBay and if you can find it check comps now the thing is the markets kind of flooded especially like with stuff like mon the monogram print the traditional monogram print but I've sold purses I've sold um, wallets and clothing I tend to make the most profit selling the clothing I sold a Louis Vuitton sweater last year on eBay for 200 bucks that I actually found on thread up for $50 um, I actually sourced a Louis Vuitton purse on ThreadUp for $60, had it authenticated for $30, or was it $20? So it was, I was $80 bucks into it. Then I sent it to the Real Real and sold it, and my net payout was $290. So you got to get creative with making money, friends. If you don't find Louis Vuitton in your thrift stores or in your consignment stores, you could check online. If you're interested, I know selling the higher-end brands makes some people nervous, but I wanted to include it. I wanted to include these last, I'm gonna include all of these. I'm just gonna put them all on the screen because uh, I've been doing this for 10 years now and I would, not a liar, I would be remiss if I didn't mention these high-end brands that I personally like to sell that I source online. So Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Chanel, Burberry, Fendi, Versace. Now Versace is one, should I tell you guys this? Nah, I'm going to save that. I was about to drop like a really good sourcing tip. I'm going to save that for a YouTube short, okay? But we'll just lump those together because they're all high end. And yeah, okay? So just open your mind. I love filming these videos because I like opening your mind to different sourcing strategies. But if you remember nothing I've said, please check comps. Don't go to some store buying Versace, Gucci, Fendi, and without looking at comps of the specific item you're buying to make sure it's going to sell and to make sure you're gonna make a profit, okay? Should we keep going? How am I doing on time? Let's do a couple more. I have a list, I've already told you guys that, I'm sure. Ray-Ban, I personally love wearing Ray-Ban. I love reselling it. I tend to get it in pallets and I tend to find it in the Goodwill like cases. You know, I don't know if where you guys are, but like in my thrift stores and consignment stores, the like nicer higher end stuff I'm doing air quotes because it's very bad like higher end I don't know but they tend to put it in the like cases 
and they don't mark it up a lot, uh, which is very rare for, because where I live here, they mark up everything. Um, but I found a, uh, I found two Ray-Bans in the case. They were only marked at 15 bucks. No scratches, really good condition. They didn't have the case. And I flipped both of them. One of them I sold for 50 and the other one I sold for 75 and they were the aviators. So look up comps. I also get Ray-Ban quite a bit in my palettes and I just love selling it. I love selling accessories, intimate wear, hard goods because it just doesn't require as much work on the front end like a pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses it's like you take the photos you you say whether they're scratches or not you put the style you're good to go you know what I mean like with a pair of jeans you got to do the inseam and the inside tag and all that stuff so anyways I love selling specifically like bras um, and like sunglasses handbags uh, handbags require more photos but like smaller things I love selling because it's just so easy to photograph Sorel I find this brand actually uh quite a bit at the thrift store and i love selling it um higher retail price uh i do really good selling their boots i have quite a few shoe brands in here ugh can't remember if we put this in the last brand video i may have been in the first one ugh used to sell really great for me for like i could resell their boots for like anywhere from like 50 to 100 bucks not so much anymore i tend to find a lot of uggs at the bins and they are beat to crap um i actually find them a lot in the not a lot but i find them in the thrift store and i just look up comps um a lot of times though they are really beat up you guys so definitely Make sure you're taking condition into consideration because a lot of people don't want used beat up boots. People are fine use, uh, wearing used shoes, but like if they're in poor condition, you have to think about that. Superga is a brand that sold at a couple different big retailers, uh, Nordstrom, I know for sure, maybe even Bloomingdale's. It's like a higher end casual shoe brand. I'll put photos on the screen. I love selling their shoes. Uh, I found I found them used and I've gotten a pair in my palette and they hold their value pretty well on the resale market. So um, it's a newer brand to me. I learned about like two or three years ago. Doc Martens I find specifically at consignment stores. I don't know why, but they love taking Doc Martens here. And sometimes they mark them up. Like I bought a pair of like these rare Doc Martens from Buffalo Exchange for 40 bucks and I sold them on eBay for $220. I'm not a Doc Martens expert. Like the tips I'm giving you guys are the things that I actually do. I just used Google Lens and realized they were kind of like a rarer style and put them up on eBay and they sold. New Balance. Love selling New Balance. Women, men's, children's. I love uh, buying them for my toddler. Um, so that's why I know that the children's shoes sell so well. I buy them for Zane all the time. Kids beat up their shoes. They're really good quality shoes for kids and I love reselling them if I can find them in like good used condition. Timberland is not a brand I have a ton of experience selling. I have more experience selling like their clothing than the actual like boot that you probably are thinking of. Um, I do really well selling the Timberland men's clothing and I actually find it at the thrift store and I have gotten it in a palette. How are we doing on lighting? You're probably at this point, you're not looking at me, you're listening. A lot of you have told me you just put these videos on in the background while you're doing your shipping or you're working. So you're probably like, girl, I'm not even looking at you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Brooks Brothers. I love selling Brooks Brothers. Really good quality um, men's clothing, shoes, accessories. I love selling all of it. All of it. I think I put this in the first video, but I wanted to mention it again because I just flipped a Brooks Brothers merino wool sweater that I found at the bins. Uh, for like it was it was kind of heavy so I want to say it was like two dollars and fifty cents sold for 40 bucks and it's July right now that's why I love selling stuff year-round Hollister oh, man I used to be able to sell these jeans from Hollister for like 30 to 40 bucks like a couple years ago uh, this is a brand I mostly exclusively will pick up at the bins I do get it sometimes in my palettes um, but I do look up styles. They make up, they make so many different styles of jeans. I specifically like selling their jeans. Uh, I think that's exclusively all I've really sold from them. Maybe a dress or here or two. It, things get fuzzy, you guys, when you've been reselling so long. I've been doing this for 10 years now. So like, I'm, I know I used to sell their, their dresses like years ago, but 
lately, like the last two to three years, it's only been jeans that I find at the bins and I look up comps on the specific style that I find because some styles sell better than others. Let us stop there for now so I can go do my real estate stuff and I will catch you back either in my office or at the storage. Friends, this video is all over the place. Um, the last clip you saw, I was uh, running errands. I went to do a real estate thing. Then I put my gym clothes black, black on, back on. I'm delirious. These are my days, you guys. I'm all over the place. Like, when I tell you I have 50 jobs, I'm not joking. And after this, after I'm done filming this, we are going to take the boys to the pool. That is still so wild to say, boys. Like, I just had a child. He's eight weeks now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have two children. Anyways, I digress. Uh, the storage unit this side, this part you're seeing looks crazy. I'm working through it, you guys. I will give you a sneak peek of the storage. Let's do that now. Let me show you what's happening. So as I mentioned to you guys, I've been posting a lot of short form content showing you the updates. My storage unit has never, ever looked this bad. And the 10 years of reselling ever, but I got a little overzealous and ordered way too much inventory at the end of my pregnancy. And so I thought I could work through this all while being 40 weeks pregnant and it was a mess. So, but now I've cleared, like there were bags all the way up to here, you guys, that's all gone. So I'm doing pretty good, but I am going to be running a mystery box sale on Poshmark on the Monday after you're watching this. I will link it the first thing in the description box and I'm going to be making mystery boxes of everything. Like all of this is Skims. There will be Skims mystery boxes. All the black bags are Nordstrom clothing. There will be men's clothing. There'll be premium clothing. So if you wanna come and get a deal, make sure you come to that live sale. I've been working on creating the boxes all weekend and putting everything in those priority boxes and I'm gonna move through a bunch of inventory. And then all of those boxes back there, all of those are skims. It's crazy times here, friends, but what a blessing to have so much inventory, right? That's how I look at it. I was a little overwhelmed at first, but I've just put my head down and been grinding, making sales, making YouTube videos, doing real estate deals, and working through this. Let's get back to the video. All right, Abercrombie uh, jeans. <laughs> For me, I do well selling the jeans. That's all I really have the experience with. Men's jeans, women's jeans, love selling their jeans. I don't pay up for it. I find it at the bins or I buy it on $2 day. Merrill work. This is a newer to me line of Merrill. I didn't know that they specifically had a line just for like construction and stuff, like construction boots, shoes. If you can find it, very, very good quick flip because they retail for quite a bit and they hold their resale value. I just found them at the thrift store recently. It must have been one guy because I found six pairs of Merrill work construction boots that were tore up from the floor up. And so I was like, nobody's going to buy these. But uh, I sold them on Facebook Marketplace as a lot to one person. We met at the Starbucks parking lot and he, I think I paid 12 bucks per and he paid me 40 bucks per pair. So there you go. Um, Zella Men's. Zella is, I'm pretty sure it's a brand that's just sold at Nordstrom, right? It's the only place I've ever seen it. It might be sold at other department stores. Active wear line. The women's stuff, so their stuff can retail for quite a bit, you guys. Like a basic t-shirt like this from Zella could retail for like 30, 40, 50 bucks. Um, but I love selling the men's stuff and I find it used. I came up, up came upon, I'm delirious. Um, a lot of Zella men's workout shorts at the thrift store, pick them up on $2 day, flip them on eBay for 30 bucks each. So I feel like that's a brand that a lot of, or some of us could probably find at the thrift store, the flea market. Um, and I've also received it in liquidation. Vince men's, you know, Vince makes women's clothing. They make men's clothing. It retails for a ton. The resale value. I usually have a hard time selling Vince women's clothing or it sits forever. But for the men's stuff, I tend to do pretty well with the shirts and the pants. Um, and Urban Outfitters, I have the most experience selling this brand jeans. Look up the comps, they make a ton of different jean styles. I also get it occasionally in liquidation and it sits, like the women's stuff. So I just prefer to pick it up thrifted, you guys, so I'm able to look up the comps on the jean styles. I have the most experience selling the jeans and occasionally dresses. Another newer to me brand, I'm sure I'm gonna butcher it, Rod and Gun. It's a men's clothing line that I've seen at a couple different big retailers. They make a lot of like nice button ups, 
Um, I think they make pants too. Retails for quite a bit and the resale value is actually pretty good. I sold a three quarter zip sweater in July for $31 on eBay and um, I've been listing quite a bit of it. I find it quite a bit in the thrift stores here. Peter Millar, am I saying that right? Millar, I'm sure. I love selling this brand. Listen to me. If you go look in my Poshmark closet right now, I have a Peter Millar jacket that is 100% wool for like 300 bucks and it has a small um, tear on it. Guys love this brand. They make really high quality clothing, suits, jackets, shirts. Sells really well for me. I find it at the thrift store, not super often, but I have many times. And I've also found that sounded contradictory. Not super often, but I have many times. You know what I'm trying to say. Like over the 10 years that I've been doing this, I've found it many times, but it's not like I'm finding it every time I go to the thrift store. And I've also been receiving it, luckily, quite a bit in my Nordstrom palette. All Saints. I do not like picking up All Saints women's stuff. I don't understand. It's just so sad. Some of these brands like retail for so much and then you can't even give it away on the resale market. I feel like All Saints women's clothing is one of those, but the men's stuff, I actually like picking up. Another newer to me brand, a men's brand. I have a lot of men's stuff in here. Let me, I love selling men's clothing. If I've always told you guys this, if I could only sell men's clothing, I would. I feel like they're a lot less picky. They buy their stuff. They don't return it. Um, they have a lot less fit issues because, you know, I just, I love it. Um, but I do have quite a few men's brands in here. So if you guys would like a dedicated men's clothing brand video, let me know. Because I sell quite a bit of men's. So this is um, another newer to me brand. David Donahue sold at a couple different retailers. Similar to Road and Gun, like t-shirts, button-ups. I think they even make pants. I have most experience selling their button-ups. I've got it in pallets, I've got it thrifted. Now we're gonna do some higher end, well these two. Zegna, very high end, super, super high end. Like some of their stuff could be thousands of dollars. I've only found it at consignment shops and I've only found like button up shirts. Um, they make coats for like literally three to $6,000. I found a Zegna at Crossroads for 40 bucks. It was a white button up and I ended up selling it, where did I sell it, on the real real? And I think my payout to me was like $120. So not super common, but I wanted to include it because it's really high end. Uh, these I'm gonna lump together. So Theory Men's, which we used in, as an example earlier, and Page Men's Jeans, love it. The women's stuff, you gotta look up comps. It's like just, I was gonna say it's everywhere, but I think this is very much a regional thing. They must have, I've mentioned this before, Theory must have like a factory here or something or distribution center because I'm not kidding every single time I thrift in Los Angeles I find theory every single time but then when I've thrifted in like New Jersey or Florida or I've thrifted a lot of places like Montana don't find it at all so I remember when I started thrifting here in LA I was like oh man people must find theory like everywhere they go it's not it's a local thing there's a reason so I find Theory Men's quite a bit. Um, look up comps. Even the men's stuff may not move super fast, but when it does sell, it usually sells full price for me. And the Page Men's Jeans. Man, Page Women's Jeans. I used to be able to sell for so much money, you guys. Used, new, back in the day. Now it's a slower mover. It doesn't sell for as much, but the men's jeans, um, still holding their value. Comte des garçons. Comte des garçons. I think I'm pronouncing that right which translate to mean, uh, sorry, means like boys. It means like boys. I wrote it down, but I'm reading mean, it, anyway. Comme de Garçon means like boys. It's a men's high-end clothing line, like si similar to Zegna, you guys, very expensive. Like think like some of their t-shirts could be like 500 to a thousand bucks. I actually find this brand um, online from consignment shops and I usually send it to the real real or thread up uh, not thread up thread up doesn't sell men's I usually send it to the real real <clears throat> just check comps because it's weird the real real so weird that's why I stopped making videos on them some stuff they price up from the same brand and that they'll price like not so great like I sent them three comps de garçon t-shirts one they priced at 200 one they priced at 400 and the other one they priced at like a hundred 
So you could sell it yourself though, check out comps on eBay, or you could send it to the real real. Now, we're gonna finish with these last 10 brands or nine brands. Wow, this is over 50. So I'm gonna save some of these. I just realized I'm going over 50 brands. This will take us to 59, but I'm just gonna do an honorable mention and put them all on the screen. Okay. These are all beauty brands that I love selling. Pat McGrath, Morphe, Anastasia, Anastasia, Beverly Hills, Too Faced, Urban Decay. Where do I find these? Uh, first of all, let me explain. If you are new, I sell everything. If you couldn't tell from my storage unit. <laughs> Perfume, handbags, golf clubs. Uh, skis I sold some skis like I sell everything okay I don't just sell clothing I love selling beauty products because if you can't tell from the makeup I love wearing beauty products so I find these things all types of ways um, I find them retail arbitrage and I actually get quite a quite a bit of beauty products in liquidation but you if you don't buy palettes you don't buy liquidation you can find these things retail arbitrage uh, just look up like expiration dates a lot of beauty products don't expire until they're opened. So like for example, a mascara, I won't go off on a tangent too much on this. A mascara doesn't start expiring until you open it and then most mascaras, once you open it, you have three months. Now of course there's caveats. Like if that mascara has been around for 10 years, that one tube and no one's ever opened it, that could probably be risky. So you wanna make sure you're not selling expired stuff. Some beauty products do actually put expiration dates on but not many. Anyways, all this stuff, most of the stuff I get is either retail arbitrage, liquidation, I make sure it's not expired. And you can flip a lot of this stuff for profit, you guys. Like for example, Pat McGrath, very expensive makeup brand, very expensive. Like an eyeshadow palette could be like 100, 200 bucks. A lipstick is like 30 to $60, like expensive stuff. So people will look on eBay and Poshmark and try to get it for a deal. Um, so I wanted to include those, I probably have put the names on the screen because I do sell quite a bit of beauty still and I love it it's so easy to photograph it's easy to list doesn't require 15 million photos it's easy to ship I'll usually just put it in like some bubble wrap and a poly mailer and it's good to go like if it's something more fragile um, like an eyeshadow palette I'll probably put it in a box so I know some of you didn't come here for beauty lessons but I just wanted to include that because it wouldn't be a real Nikki video if I didn't mention some of the things that I actually really do like selling. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you liked like the change of scenery. I think it's kind of fun to like just not see me sitting in my office all the time. I know you guys like these brand videos, so don't forget to subscribe. I am also posting short form content daily, and I want to get back to posting like longer form videos two to three times a week. So let me know that you like this if you've made it this far by subscribing. YouTube shows me that like 50% of you that watch are not subscribed. Subscribe. I'm going to get my shipping done and I will see you soon. Ciao.